Hello and welcome, Gail Telfer Stevens. I was just saying, I was listening to Gail on the radio this morning. You told me it was Clyde 2, but it's actually called Greatest Hits. Yeah, they, they merged, didn't they? But I know it's Clyde 2. Aye. But it's Greatest Hits. But yeah. if you Google Clyde 2, because I Googled it to get the frequency, it comes up anyway. Oh. So it's not so a link to there that. There you go. Oh, there's no issues. Um, aye, so I was saying, I was just listening to that, and every time you and Cameron said Gail's name, he said, the star of River City. And I was thinking, I better say that. So it's Gail Telfer Stevens, the star of River City. Most people probably do know you for River City, but I, I always associate you with the dolls. Because I know, I know a woman that's quite like the dolls. Her name's, <laughs> her name's Janice. That was a story for another day. But anyway, so I wanted to, there's loads we can talk about, absolutely mm -hmm. loads. And actually, since messaging you to come on, I've learned so much more. But I'm like, oh, we need to talk I'm, about I was that. so excited about meeting you today because oh, I've been following you for a long time. And I just love the stuff you do. Because it's it's so relatable and so real. And I think that's what we're missing on the Insta nowadays, isn't it? Aye, is the reality of the situation. It's like that Be Real app. I don't have that, right? But you need to take it wherever you are, like the photo, wherever you are or whatever you're doing. So you can't filter it. And I like that. And I feel like this is oh, not wow. unfiltered, but it's like it's very real. And yeah. I like that. And I try to make it like that. And it does, like I've just explained to you before we get in the car, it does come with its issues, technical issues. Mm -hmm. Not Never anything that MD said or done, mm -hmm. always technical. It does come with that. But I always keep powering on because I just think, no, we want the real life out Absolutely. there. We, we want, want you to see your we nails. To see it. Her nails, look at me. I, I go to the shop myself. to get my... I know. Oh, I know. What, what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> Just paint my nails anyway. I'm like that. She's a sketch waiting to happen. Oh, and you don't. Oh, oh, you might find yourself oh, a sketch. Oh, that would be pure bang, and I would love that. Um, anyway, so I'm a coffee I wanted to. The first time I'd message you though, like I've all got this thing about. I don't know much about the performing arts industry at all, uh -huh. but I have always got this thing about, I wonder if it's harder for women. I wonder if it's oh, harder right. for women to get into it and all of that. So that was originally what I wanted to ask you about. So I will mm -hmm. start with that. I'm mm -hmm. going to ask you that now. How did you get into it though? Did you did you go through school knowing that's what you wanted to do? Yeah, I, I watched the steamy when I was seven going on eight in the back room at Hogmanay. I think it was 1989 or 1988, it was um, broadcast in STV and uh, I swear like I saw those women on the telly talking, speaking the way that my mum and my grandma and my aunties did and I went I want to do that and that was it for me, I was like, it was like a tunnel vision and my mum, in, in those days you didn't have the internet so it was like my mum would be through the yellow pages to try and find places for me to go because there wasn't much locally for where I lived for drama schools or performing arts and I just really I didn't fall into it it was like totally meant it was like mm. this was the mission even when I went to school my, my school which was the Veil vale Academy loved my school because I was a social butterfly I had a great time at school socially not academically as you can imagine <laughs> I had a cracking laugh I was a good <laughs> laugh at school but um, yeah so they didn't cater to like like drama or anything like that there was nothing really kind of going on there so it was up to me to to do that I mean I went to the careers officer and they said to me you you, you do um home economics cake decorating you because why don't you be a chef I said no I'm going to be an actor and they went mm, there's no many jobs in that you know for, for performers or whatever and it was almost like a, a mission to prove them all wrong mm -hmm. that I would do it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not like I say, oh, and I'm doing it. Like, it's a graft. It's it's a lot. You, you're constantly hustling. Even me at 42, from the age of seven or eight, um, I'm still hustling. Aye. Yeah. And you, so you you did want to do that your mm -hmm. whole entire life. And, and I should have mentioned about the dolls, because that's yeah. how, did I say that? That is what I associate uh, you with. The, and that's who I think it is the dolls, even although you were in River City. Mm -hmm. Anyway, like I say, I'm jumping all over the place like I do. Going back to that then, so did you do, the whole time you were at school, did you study for anything other than no. being an actor? So it was just getting through school, get out of school, get into acting as mm -hmm. quickly as you could. I would always do like shows throughout the year and kind of uh, classes, everything. I mean, my mum used to say, you're in everything but the co-op window. <laughs> I quite like that, because I kind of was. Um, and I went on to college, so I went to Motherwell College 
and um, I did a year there and it was like, it was London for me. I think when you want it that bad and you've been doing it for such a, a young age and you're at, a, you need to be at a level and the thing is, I was like, there wasn't much going on in Scotland for what I wanted to do at the time, which was musical theatre. I really found my love for that. Um, it was like, I need to go to London. And I mm -hmm. went to London when so I was 17, Marvel, 18. You, did you live in Dumbarton, though? Mm -hmm. So you travelled from Dumbarton? They did a really good performing arts course, um, mm. like an acting performance course. And uh, it was kind of like at the, the beginnings of it. It was really good. And uh, Gillian Archibald uh, headed it. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. She's now uh, Gillian McLaren-Scott. She's a vocal coach now. She was amazing and she really helped me really like extensively. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I so you went travel. to London? No, oh, no, right, no. So I went, so I travelled there in the Mother Hell, Costa del Mother Hell, I call it. <laughs> and then, um, Mother Hell. and then I went to, I auditioned for a drama school in London. I went to one, I remember going down that day on the train with my mum and we stayed in this hotel, right? And it was like on Seven Sisters Road. I'd never been to London before and it was like, oh my God, like what, what is this? What, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm for the rent and I'm like from the smallest town ever. And uh, I ended up in London with my mum trying to guide me about the place. It was hysterical. I'm having a flush right now. Oh, uh, can you, you see? Do you know what I've oh. got? Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about the menopause. Oh, uh, look what I've got. Oh, I've amazing. got a, I brought um, cause my phone overheated. I was just oh, that's just amazing, man. Uh, this is brilliant. I've got a fan. I've got one for my my oh. uh, phone as well, but I brought two just in case there was any issues. You know, because do you know that that works really well? I feel as if you brought it this for me. Well, you have the two of them because oh. I don't think it's going to work. But do you know what else we could do? Would you prefer the windows shut and the aircon on? No, 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 no. Because this will just start happening intermittently. This might not happen again. Anyways, away. Oh, sorry, guys. I went to London uh, and auditioned for um, this drama school called Mountview, which was the top um, top drama school in the in UK at the time. And um, we went to this wee hotel in Seven Sisters Road, and it was like the bathroom was in the cupboard. And I was like, "What is going on here? I am not staying here, and I'm not coming here to live by any means." Went to the, the drama school, auditioned. I was like, nah, I feel as if I've, I'm meant to be here. I, I belong here. <laughs> and then we missed our train home because I'd been asked to stay back. And my mum, it was like that. Right, what did they say? Now, you know how the mums want it word for word. They want, like, every conversation. What mm -hmm. happened when you went in the room? What did the guy say to you? What did you do? What did your face look like? They all the, like, want, wanted a whole production from me, basically. And, uh... And I said, I was so stressed about it. And I said, right, just shut up about it. I'm not talking about it anymore. <laughs> We're on the train, because we had to get another train. She spent quite a lot of money on the credit card. Still never told my dad about that to this day. And uh, she went to the buffet car and she came back and she had the full Buna for herself, bottle of wine and all that. And I went, where's mine? She went, you're not getting anything, you're a cheeky bitch. <laughs> I swear to God, she still she still says that. <laughs> Mind that time I went to the buffet, can never got you in because you were cheeky because you wouldn't do the performance for me of what they'd said in the oh, actual movie. So uh, that, that was, and then that was kind of the beginning of the the journey going down to London, experiencing a really different life. Spent a long time down there, did uh, Jerry Springer the Opera, and then in the West End, which is amazing. But it kind of eventually, London just didn't get me. They didn't mm -hmm. get my jokes, so nobody really <laughs> laughed at me. And I don't know if it was because I wasn't funny, but they just didn't get me. No, I was the, the only same. Scot it's not Scottish the same. Humor is, comp is another like, league. We are, we are, we are another league. We are, uh, we are up there. And I was like, this is crap because they're not really, they're no indulging in the funny girl. No. So I was like, it's time to go home. I need to go home to the motherland because you know how when you come home from London or if you, you live away, people are, live away from home will know this. See, when you got off that platform, you smell the Scottish air. It's like mm. bag, it's, it's like Billy Connolly says, right. the bagpipes start playing <laughs> and you, the chest puffs out and you're like, ah, rolling square, please. You know what I mean? Like, it's total. And I can't, I am blue. Like, total, like, I missed, I was so utterly homesick in London. Mm -hmm. Utterly, utterly homesick. But I loved what London had to offer me and had to offer everybody you can do anything in london right mm -hmm. i mean anything is available to you good stuff bad stuff and indifferent stuff right and i loved it but it just wasn't for me in the end mm -hmm. i think homesickness would be my biggest thing because when you go on holiday even for two weeks and you think in the first couple of days oh i'm moving abroad i'm going to live abroad oh, in the beautiful sunshine 
And then when it comes up to your two weeks for going home, you're going, you, you need to go home. wait to you're get like, home. I need the piss and rain. <laughs> <laughs> and I need cold. to hear, like, it's people as well. I spent a lot of time in New York. I went over to New York just before my wee baby was born because um, I was just kind of done with the industry and I was like, well, I need to go and kind of refresh. And I went to Uta Hagen's studio in New York and I was like, I'm, li I'm, I'm going to live here. Oh, three months went past us. I'll get me up the road. I even get, a, I get a, an earlier flight out of there. I'm well known for that, going on holidays and then coming home early. Well known. Get back. Been to Devon. Aye. I was like, up the road after two days, nah, it's not for me. Went to Australia, come home two weeks early. £1,500 at the pleasure. Nah, get me up the road. I'm mental uh, like that. that is I don't, mental. And that I think is mental. Very, very, I'm a big home bird. People uh, say, where are you going on holidays uh, this year? No, go, I don't go on holidays. <laughs> do you not? Do you not even go on holidays? No. no. Do you burn though? Because you're all burnt. I, I sit in the shade and stuff. I have this kind of fantasy in my head of what two weeks in Turkey would look like, right? Oh, I oh, swim up pool because I'm like that. I'm not doing it like basic. I am going all out. I want a butler. I want a swim up pool. I want all that. And then I just go, oh no, I don't want any of that because I just want to. I want the cost that on home. my. Aye. But you're living right at Loch Lomond. Oh, place yeah. The name I'd rather, from the I would rather be up a hill than in Aye. Turkey. Aye. Mm. And do you know, see, even driving along the road here, I do cold water dipping as well, although I'm not as Aye. regular as you, right? And I should be doing it more, and I'm desperately in media dip now because I'm feeling a bit, you know, like mm. I'm saying, a bit ragey and stressed out my box. But see, when I hit that road, when you come off the Erskine Bridge, mm -hmm. and like, is, I'm assuming that's Ben Lomond, is it? Mm -hmm. There. And you see that I just almost had this instant feeling of uh -huh. so oh the bagpipes playing again. It is, it's so, I can't even describe it when you've got that connection mm. in nature, which everybody's got. Mm. But you know, when you do the dip, when you come here regularly, and you recognise it as that happy. I suppose place, the people for the tune come down here on their holidays. They leave aye. all their litter lying about the Balfour Park and all that. I was around the Balfour Park yesterday, picking oh, up the litter for the weekend. That's brutal. Your dirty aye, bunch of ants. <laughs> Man. But um, I was up Ben Lomond on Thursday. Aye, I went so up, nice. it's beautiful. Aye, it took, it's so, it took me a so long nice. time right enough. But um, oh, but it doesn't matter how long it takes us off, but the journey is. Anyway, exactly, it's, yeah. it's about the, the process. That's amazing, that. So, um, we digress, right? So, how did you get into the actual big time? Like being on River City, being oh. on the stage, performing in the King State and whatever. What were you up against? Well, I did a lot of film and TV before that. Like, I'd done your Casualty, your, your Doctor Who. Are you were in Waterloo Road. Road. I've Aye. done, like, all the wee kind of... I was always a bridesmaid and never quite touching the bride. I was never getting there. And I can honestly say it was probably just the fact that I just wouldn't give up. And see, when I get a no, even now, I'm like, I'm getting up. That's it. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm going to be something else. That's and I don't like know what you. it is. But it's just like... And then... You go back and you just kind of recoup or regroup, whatever you call it, and you just go right. This because it's who I am. I can't change who I am. Mm. Uh, see if you see if you want to do acting, you go. I fancy myself as an actor, but you can be an accountant. Go and be an accountant because this is like a disease that will never go from you. Mm. And I and I mean that in the nicest way possible. It's the thing that I love, but it's the thing that I loathe. Mm -hmm. the most mm -hmm. so that's kind of where it is I, I got picked up for River City for that was probably my biggest break I did Sunshine on Leith beforehand um, a brilliant Scottish film and uh, I loved doing that but it was a wee while until I got something else mm -hmm. and I was just kind of auditioning not getting anywhere you get more no's than yeses in this industry and uh, I was picked up by a lady actually, I did in the Scott Squad and she watched me in it um, very, very early days of Scott Squad, very, very first, first um, episode. When I say I was always a bridesmaid, never the bride, so most people got regular contracts out of that and I never got my regular contract. They were like, no, nah, we're just, you were the guest in that and it was like, oh, another one, mm -hmm. like seriously, like there's lots of that, like, ah, oh, this is shite. Mm -hmm. But this lady, Kathleen Hutchison, had been um, an executive producer for EastEnders, um, Holby. Like, she was pretty big stuff and she's very powerful. She's a right woman boss, you'd love her. <laughs> and uh, she was like, I want you to come in and read for this part. And I was like, right, but I'm taking it with a pinch of salt because you have to take everything with a pinch of salt. Because I have a director say to me on the way out the door of an audition, we'll speak to you Monday and I'm like that I've got this I've mm -hmm. got it I've got it mm -hmm. I've got it and mm -hmm. then it, and the phone call never comes mm -hmm. so you take everything with a pinch of salt and I did and actually the phone call came and, I, and like two hours after the audition 
and they were like, you've got this part. And I, I remember going into River City thinking, right, you've got a chance here, you've got an opportunity, put your big balls on and get in about it. And that I just, eight years ago, I hit the ground running and I've no, I have not come up for air. And that was eight years ago that you mm -hmm. got that. Are you still in River City? Mm -hmm. Are you? Mm -hmm. So, are you filming soon? Like the day we're or the off, water No, no, we're, we're off on a break just now, which is oh, probably right. one of the biggest breaks we've had. Um, but yeah, we go back uh, August time because we always kind of have the summer because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it is, it's like it's an amazing job. I love it. I, I have so much love for it. It gets looked down upon quite a lot in the industry, but we should. Why? But, well, exactly. I, I, I urge people that work in television to spend a day down there to see what we actually do, what we come up against, what we shoot in a day, what we tackle and the quality of the work that we put out. Mm -hmm. We're quite. It's because it's probably a long-standing thing, and I, I don't. I don't understand why it doesn't get the accolades of the recognition recognition mm -hmm. that, that it should do, um, or should get even. But yeah, so I'm a I'm a huge huge supporter of it because it's well, obviously that's I, your, that's where you got your. Big I've been break able to I've been able to spread my wings there, my acting mm -hmm. chops. I've been able to show all kinds of sides how of me. How do you? This is I don't know if anybody ever asks you this, but see acting, I always think, how do they remember their lines, man? I can barely remember what what day my wings got gin. Never <laughs> mind. Remember. Well, I don't remember those things, but I definitely remember how my lines. How do you? Like, how? I think it just it is definitely like a muscle. Eventually, you really you produce this muscle that it, it's like. I can look at a scene and go, right. Visualise it. It's almost like not a photographic memory, not as amazing as that, but you 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 grow techniques over time where you go like, right, okay, right, let's just shoot it. I've got it in my head, let's do it. It might be paraphrased a wee bit, but I'll get Are there. You, is that okay? You're allowed no, to do it's that? Not okay, oh, is but, it not? But I get away with murder. <laughs> See, I, I would need to parrot. In fact, I just don't even give me a script. I would just paraphrase it as I went along. Right? There's your top quality content viewing. Sometimes <laughs> I, I go, the, I've got a better word there, and that's what I'm doing. But listen, all the people, um, the, the crew are down there are amazing. They're very supportive and they become like family eventually because you know I spend 12 hours at my work each day right mm -hmm. and those people make everything happen for you they look after you and you're all the same in that building and mm -hmm. it's a lovely thing mm -hmm. and see now that you've like got your big thing now mm -hmm. what would you say was the hardest thing or the hardest challenge getting that dish the dirt girl tell us what the bad stuff is the bad the stuff industry. i is think it's the cliqueiness stuff? of it i think that if you're it, it, your face really has to fit in this industry but i don't mean that in I mean, I've been really lucky, I, I feel, and it's not about dish in the dark, but sometimes your face really does have to uh, fit, and I really yeah. do feel like there's been a lot of luck for me to show what I can do, because not the most talented people are in work. Mm -hmm. The most talented people, yes, some of them are in work, and they get to show their mm -hmm. talent, but a lot of the time, like, it's not the best people are on the screen, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, and yeah, actually, and there's lots of things like the snobbery of, like, not having a network show, that's just, it's this is becoming more and more apparent within the industry that's like nah they've not done anything big so they're not getting the part and it's like well that's not the best man for the job that's what really kind of that gets my goal it chokes me almost Aye. and do you know i'm not really wanting you to dish the dirt and the reason i'm asking i, I mean you, i though, would I'm, I'm quite straight down the line a lot of people that know me will go all oh, right she's, yeah. she's being honest oh no here's galen getting a list Aye. what's she gonna say <laughs> um See, do you know what makes me ask you just all this crap? And I'm going to say crap because a lot of it is just hearsay and gossip and people's yeah. opinions to do with Philip Schofield and Eamon Holmes particularly. Those two things, yeah. not the actual, you know, backstory. But, you know, he said, Eamon Holmes has came out now and said about how cliquey it was. And yeah, that yeah. was part of the problem, the power thing with yeah, yeah. and whatever. And I thought, I wonder if it's like that. I wonder if it is dead cliquey and if you're in with the right people you're in and if you're not because I worked in the bank for 19 years huge corporation I can relate to that I think that's what it was goes like. on a lot and everywhere it, I think yeah it, go, it will go on everywhere especially when something has been well established mm. for so long mm -hmm. you can create these cultures and it doesn't matter a job really because mm. it's still going out the, mm. the service is still being provided People are still seeing what they see. It doesn't really matter what's going on behind the scenes. That's what made me ask you that. But you've answered it. What I, think, you're I, I think it's important to say that 
I, ha I am really lucky and I'm quite straight down the line. So if I've ever experienced anything like that, it's not that I've called it out. I mean, the, the Scottish uh, theatre scene's very, very clicky. Mm -hmm. Very clicky, and that's not, I'm not adverse to saying that because yeah, because you know, it's well known. It's probably well, well known with people that I um, think it's just I don't even know if it's like I don't I, I don't really know if if it is. Maybe I'm saying that because maybe I'm not in amongst it, but I'm in amongst another scene. So it's like it, it's kind of what you what you get with one hand is taken away with the other. That's the kind of I don't really know if you can have it all over. Uh, do you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I think. It's just working anywhere else. That's what it sounds like. I think like if somebody's in a job, right? Mm -hmm. This is my theory, right? If somebody's mm -hmm. in a job like what I do at mm -hmm. River City and they're absolutely gash, right? They are not going to survive. Not with the kind... In anything in, in TV, if they've got a big role and they're terrible, they're not going to last because the, the pressure's too much. The pressure and the time constraints are too much. So you're not going to last. These people don't last that long. Uh, they need to be pretty solid. I to think be yeah. in that type of job. You have and to. Be, you, you're a you're a, a certain kind of person. You have to be very very. What is the the word I'm looking for? Um, resilient. Yes. Yes. That's uh, it. Do you know? Just a wee touching on that that you're saying there. That was another thing. Eamon Holmes said that Philip Schofield wasn't actually even that great a presenter. But he was so well in there. But he was the right. rude. But he, but Eamon Aye. Holmes spoke to Ruth on so many occasions and totally degraded her in front of millions of people. To his own wife. To his own wife. I know. Like, I, I thought about that as well. I am That's taking nothing that that man that. says. Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and also, he never whistle blew them in the nine years that he worked for them. I know, so it could have been that bad. Of, Do you know, know what I mean? See, I've got a lot of questions. People, people on have that. got a lot to say. Aye. 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 And, and then it's like, knows it all, knows. Mm. <laughs> There's a lot yeah, of them about. I know. I'm just so sick of it now. I'm sick of hearing about it, reading about it, everything. Oh, Get it in the bin. I'm over it. And it's almost like um, they're destroying people, aren't they? Um, it's like hanging them out to dry. Yeah. It's like almost mm -hmm. like the the modern day witch hunt, isn't uh, it? It really is, uh, and it's it like, is, and it's this and your whole personal life is, uh -huh, as well. And your personal life's not your personal life, and I totally disagree with that. And people say, yeah, but they're in a job, and I'm like that. Nah. Yeah, but it can be taken away. The culture of me going into my work is contract to contract. I'm not on my of retainers and I go when I have a, a, a time off my a spell off my work I'm a freelance actor mm -hmm. I'm not affiliated with anything I'm not working at the moment right any any mm -hmm. any work out there feel free to contact me I'm not working but I am affiliated to the show I'm not paid I have no. to go and hustle and find my own stuff so, and that's what these people are they're self-employed even though they're at such a height but it can be taken away in a minute mm -hmm. in a no, minute no I agree with you and it's the same with social media funnily enough you know if you do social media and mm -hmm. you get trolled like we all do mm -hmm. if you're out there in the public domain you get trolled mm -hmm. and the the retort to you defending that is well you know you're putting yourself out there that's so you true. need to expect it and I totally I'm the same as you I totally disagree with it what yeah. gives people the right yeah. to abuse you and that way are like because, I know everybody's got, got one, one. It, it really is and, and I tend to stay a wee bit clear of social media just because my life is my life but I think I'm not giving away all my I think it is one of the it's a funny thing it's like you want it when the going's good right. but when the bad when the tough when the tough gets so when the mean, going gets tough, the uh, tough get going. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Billy so, Ocean did a song uh, about that. Uh, uh, did you play that this morning? No, I didn't. That I was heard. a good one, that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, are you only on this morning? Because can yeah. I go back till next week? Uh -huh. right, okay, so different did, people. Doing different things, uh, uh, right. it was lovely. Okay. lovely so interview. how then did the dolls come to life? How, did, how was that born? Whose well, idea was that? Well, we were, me and Louise were kind of, we were jobbing actors, we didn't have, again, we couldn't get into the clique, couldn't get arrested, never mind to get a job. <laughs> At the time, that's what we say. And it was born out of just being two lasses that went, we're going to do this. And it was your them. idea then? So no, 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 but oh, mine and Louise, oh yeah, nobody aye. governs us, yeah, absolutely. Aye. It was us two, 
Louise sang in the clubs. I just had a baby. I'd no money to buy nappies. I went, oh my God, what am I going to do? Is that how long the dolls have been going Ten for? years, oh yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realise it was And then, that. and I was like, right. And then she went out and sang and I was like, well, I'm going to go out to the clubs and sing because you got £150 in your back pocket on the Saturday night. That, and, and you that can was amazing. sing. I heard you uh -huh. singing a wee line this morning. I was like, <laughs> my God, she can sing and all. I can sing. But um, yeah, so I was like, I'm going to do that. And then we're like, well, should we just do a show because you get more money? Mm -hmm. So you get like, I think you got uh, six hundred pound if you went out with a show. Swear, swear to God, <laughs> we we're going to do like a Motown thing, and we we're like, should we just do something like a modern day? We didn't even think this clearly about it. It was literally a wing and a prayer, and we did. They booked us our first gig. We did it at um, Eastern House Masonic on the thirteenth of May, two, ten years ago. Kind of about two thousand and thirteen. Is that right? Aye. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. and that was it. The rest is mm -hmm. history. We just kept going. It's taken over most of our lives. I'll say, I can only speak for myself on this, but it's really taken a lot of time. And then when we went to the theatres, because we did the whole gig circuit, I loved the gigs. You'd meet so many amazing people. Mm. Like women would be coming up to you and saying, this is my first night out since I had cancer. And you have totally... There's a real thing about oh. strength and numbers with women, eh? Oh, a real aye. thing, a real aye. camaraderie. I mean, of it? See, even talking about... I digress slightly and I'm sorry, I'm no, taking no, it away from you. But no, you're not. See, even talking about hanging the washing out the last couple of days. I like that. Holy smoke. I did this last year as well because when it becomes the weather for I only hang my washing out in the summer. I'm not one of these people that put... I know a lot of people nah, put I it in the winter nah, and then but I can't be doing that. I put the heat on and cause my cellar washing. Um, but see, every time I talk about that, my inbox goes mental and it reminds me that that's what it's all about, that normal stuff and it's women. Really it's relatability, like, it's just like... It's like the steamy, the steamy mm, is about washing, mm, mm. it's a, you know... It's, it's just, not, it's about community, it's about it's, how you do it to how I do it. I, and I'll say to my man, don't put that wash in it because he's like he's got like half the t-shirt folded over right we've been talking about and that, I'm like that no you just put a wee bit because then it airs the whole thing and he just <laughs> looks at me like i've got four heats and i'm like i know you don't question me do not question you me you need to watch my stories this morning we're talking about t-shirts specifically but that's the thing this whole like jeans do you hang by the waist or the length like he the hangs legs. by the legs and that i'm like that's freaky into so it. does keep. i actually put it like so you get the waistband and you put the back of it so that the uh -huh. air can go down uh -huh. in it's it. It's about the science as well. You need People need to get that. I think but we should get a, do a not a documentary, but a show on washing. Aye, because the new... BBC Scotland, pick it up right yes, now. You heard it here. Because the young team, and this is deadly serious, do not know how to hang out a no, washing. They'll put, it in the, they'll put it in the clothes horse in the house and then they'll, they'll, they smell sooty. There's nothing nicer than, a, than a, a nice coat. Like people say, oh, you smell lovely, smell of washing. Aye, because you've hung it out the whole day and you need to keep it out the whole day mm. as well. But anyway, we're digressing. It's that whole camaraderie and strengthy community with women mm -hmm. is just... So it's so important, actually. And I think that we're not catered to that, especially in Scotland. We're kind of poo-pooed to the side. And it's aye, like, I and, do feel like and, that. I, and definitely with, we've had to fight to get everything that we've ever achieved as the dolls. And the dolls are a separate entity. They're, they're amazing. They've created this community. I feel like the reason that we sell out all over Scotland is because women claim us as their own and gay people alike as well. They love us, the gay guys as well. Mm -hmm. We love them and it's like it's about the community and what we and what we talk about. We're not bullshitting anybody. Mm -hmm. We're totally being honest about I think saying things that we're all thinking. Aye. Yeah. But in a way that it's a performance and therefore Aye. it's true what they say, the truer something is, the funnier it it's, is. It's almost it's, it's like an observational comedy, isn't Aye. it? Because you know yourself, like I mean <laughs> my Jack said to me the other day, it was so funny. We're talking about midges, right? And, Aye. And so is Jack your partner? Uh -huh. Right. But so we were talking and he was like, oh, the midges are wild out there. And I was like, I know, man. <laughs> like, we, you would like to just wait. Like, have you ever been up, like, I'm going to say, like, Loch Archery? And I went, no, uh, no, dog. <laughs> and he went, oh, tell you what, I was up there one time and they were chatting the caravan. One day asked me to go out to play. <laughs> and I went, nowhere in the world would you have a conversation about the midges coming and chatting at the caravan door? <laughs> I stayed to go out, I was it, buckled. Say, I, but that conversational, this is what I love about the dolls, is that they've got that kind of conversational pattern, because we have got the best pattern in the world. 
totally. And the women have got the best part of it and I refuse. The women are funnier than the guys. I just do I mean, I know I've just said something that a man's just said, but I mean, yeah. Most people over that. I do ask him for a lot. Like, do you think this is funny or that's funny? No, but when I'm writing stuff. Do you ask him that? Keith Keith is the one person on the planet that doesn't actually realise how funny I am. So I would never ask him. Oh, He's just like... So his pal got the van, his truck nicked at the weekend, oh, right? Yeah. And he sent him a poster that had a reward on it for information uh-huh. to Keith's phone. Keith says to me, will you share that? I went, I ain't bother, just no. send me the picture. On the picture, right, of the truck, there was a big horse in the background. Mm-hmm. And I went, what about the horse, Keith? <laughs> What are you talking about? He hadn't even noticed it in the picture. I went, the horse! There's a horse in the picture in this truck. Is the horse alright? I saw him thinking the van got knocked for that the truck got knocked that ah, right. But it had me, that was just the picture that he had of it the last time we had a picture, right? <laughs> so I put it up in my Instagram, you know, with the the And the everybody horse starts stolen. going the horse. No, because no, like, no. I put on it. No, so it's stolen reward for information. Yeah, I yeah, put yeah. not the horse. The horse is fine. <laughs> it's the truck that's been stolen. And um, sometimes you have to spell these out, these I, things out. I, but mm. like, I thought it was really funny. Like, think worrying about the horse when the actual poster was about the truck. It was probably one of these things where you had to be there to appreciate the humour, <laughs> right? But the next, so that was that. The next day, Keith saw him. He says, "Oh, my missus put that on on, on our social media." Like, no, oh, fuck all on about social, social media. media. That's what he says, social media. And my missus put that, and he went. I know, because his wife had showed him it. He couldn't even barely speak to Keith for laughing at how funny it was. You know, and Keith's gone, Keith came, so home, Keith came home last night and went, what did you put in that? What did you put? Because what was so funny? And I was like, I said to Keith, everybody, bar you. <laughs> <laughs> bar you. Thinks I'm funny, funny. Keith. Yeah, yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. So I would never ask Keith. If you thought something was funny, because I just know it would be, it would be a no, waste of my time. No, ask him for something funny. I say, can you tell me <laughs> something funnier? And he always comes out. Does he? Does he? You're lucky. Do you're we lucky Stevie's you've got good. That. She's good. My wee daughter's good. She's given me a couple of lines over the years. Oh, really? Oh, aye. So do you write it all yourself for well, the dolls me, anyway? Me and Louise do most of it. Sometimes we have co-writers on if we're struggling with wee bits. Um, but last show, we don't all of that. I mean... Oh, it's just a minefield, isn't it? It's been good, though. I mean, it's been amazing, and it is something for women out there. We mm-hmm. just need a TV show. Come on, come is on. Is that what you're after? Because I heard you saying as well, eh, you and this morning, that you've got a wee bit of a tour happening. Yeah. You're going around the, the So club. we're going, actually, we're going back to the clubs eh, with Gary Hollywood. I know, I know, I know, I know, Gary. Aye. So next month we're going, so come and see us very up close and personal because see when you get to the Kings I mean I, I can't even tell you I don't even I don't even think it's even me I, it's like an out of body experience I go like oh they're here for somebody else I swear uh, to god uh, we're standing there on that stage we've got our backs turned we always stand in the same pose we have our dusters and our head scarf and it's like this kind of picture and the curtain goes up and people go mental you just hear them and after Covid I said to Louise, we, I was looking more across the stage at her and I was like, ah, fuck me, are we going to be all right? And she's like, ah, we'll be all right. So I hold the hands <laughs> and it's dusters it up. And as soon as the curtain went up, we just went like that. We're all right. Because it just went, Wah! it's like a oh, wall. Right. And I get shivers uh, even talking about it. Uh, I keep uh, <laughs> But it, it is amazing because you've got 15, what was it? 1500, 1600, I think it's Kings of 1600, ask me in another capacity of a theatre in Scotland, <laughs> I'll tell you, but 1600, like, people just there, they see the dolls, see and, and yeah. it's it's almost so overwhelming that you can never, I could never explain what it feels like, and I remember when we first played the Kings, it was like, our producer, the guy that we work alongside, said, you will never experience this again you'll never feel like this and i don't feel as if i really took it in and i think from maybe after covid i really started to kind of just really take things in because i was choked a lot with my work i was up here i had a wee girl i was bringing her up i was full time in the river city i was doing the dolls it was very 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 overwhelming for me and that's not to say it's a fucking shame for me get the violins out but I think as a woman you need to be super woman you're running a business you've got a full time job and it's 12 hours in my work and then you've got to go home and do the emails and you've got to do a meeting on your lunch break and the housework still needs and done I know I've got a cleaner for that oh, I, just, I don't even I'm, I'm not even going to 
give myself that hassle ah, because I go like, well, uh, you know, you're not doing it, so who's going to do it? We need to get somebody to do it. But I mean, I think after COVID, I definitely took in a wee bit more of like just enjoy a lot of stuff because uh -huh. I think when you're on a train and like I said, I've been like that and I've no looked up since, but. I definitely think that we just need to give ourselves a wee bit of a break. We're no saving lives. We're Aye. entertaining folk. Mm. And actually, it's it's a beautiful thing. And, yeah. and I think if all this has, if all this work has come up to, that, to this point, if all the work that I've done throughout my years has, has come to this point and you're not enjoying it or you're so overwhelmed with the actual stuff that you've, you have because you can't say no to anything, well, it's not worth it. No. So that's mm -hmm. yeah, that's gonna be a downside. It, yeah, it. yeah, mm -hmm. but I definitely do enjoy it, and and actually, it's been so empowering. I mm -hmm. mean, there's that we were the we are the fastest female selling comedy duo in Scotland. Wow, no one. But there is no other mm -hmm. female comedy duo. So actually. where's the TV? <laughs> where does that? <laughs> and this so is what that. you really want is a regular, like you know. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night, something like that. Well, how can, we're like the new Ant and Deck. How can we not be doing something Aye. like that? Or like presenting they, things. They dominate they um, Saturday night TV. I know. I'm bored. Are you I bored? Know. I'm I bored. I know, and there's another thing we could, I bet we could also cough up the past way, the whole how they swept it under the carpet when Ant did the drunk, drunk driving visit. I think that's due, due to like, power. That's Aye, power. That that's totally money. 100%. But, but I would have thought that Philip was in the same category I would have thought that he yes. would have been the same thing I just it, it, it's a shame because they're totally exposed and it's not saying that like, the things they do are not uh, frowned upon or wrong uh, or, like uh, I'm not here to judge I don't really care what they're doing but I think that that did get swept under but then Caroline Flack you just go like so devastating they hung her out to dry they murdered her mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the media murdered is her is this choosing who's who's going to be cancelled and who isn't he? like that does my head in because I'm talking about cancel culture okay. annoys me then I'm saying about Ant but it's there's no there's it's it's one set of rules for one person a whole other set of rules for another person yeah. just depending on what they decide they're going to pick on that particular moment in time yeah and it's just i'm quite infuriating yeah anyway um so that's kind of your career and you're still doing you're still doing the dolls whilst you do river city later this year so you're going to be overwhelmed again so you better just simmer doing enjoy that, i do happen. enjoy that but it does all come at the ones uh, i think there was just a point where it was just all all the time and it was like well, well what happens here and then mm -hmm. covid happened and then i was like oh who am i what am mm. i doing and and i was like oh my god i thought i was gonna have my head and i was like who am i because you're you're a character you're two characters and i'm like i don't even know who i am and that sounds like oh quite it sounds quite cliched or like who am i but i literally was like get off the wheel and it made me get off the wheel and it, it done and I spent so much time with my Stevie and it was actually a really beautiful time for me mm -hmm. even though I was like I don't know if I've got a job I don't know about mm -hmm. the entertainment industry but it's like well what's the worst that can happen I often wonder that I go like that what else would I be doing like because you do the same thing for a period of time and you think well is there anything else out there like I'm destined to never get another job I don't know like all these things go through your mind but I do feel incredibly lucky to have what I have and actually just enjoy it a wee bit uh, more. Mm -hmm. Aye, that's Aye. It. And always this feeling of always trying to do better, make more, get better, and whatever. Pressure. Sometimes you need to have a word with yourself. Oh, hi, uh, it It's it all right. I, and I've, I kind of, a few years ago, I was just like, I really made my peace with you don't need to be the best at everything. And I was mm -hmm. like, Gail, stop trying to be the best at everything. You don't mm -hmm. need to be the and best just at enjoy everything. It. And really, when you stop and look at it, I say it and go, Am I enjoying this? Do I like my life? Nine like what is your life is yes uh -huh. you don't hate your life uh -huh. it's just you're chasing something constantly that's making you forget what you've actually or got. how you even started and, mm -hmm. and i think that that's the thing i'll often go like well you need to be you first and foremost and that's quite insightful in, in my journey i suppose where you're trying to hustle to because that's the, the way of the business like you know it is a, a tough tough business it's and it's really changed over the last couple of years and it's even more competitive now do you know what i mean like mm -hmm. um, social media must affect it actually well Does yeah because it? then we're like people that are on social media suddenly appearing on telly yeah that we're social media people well, we're, 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 well this is the thing so i'm an actor. i'm against that no but, obviously but, but this is the point so <laughs> maybe um in two years yeah. down the line 
Manny, the misfit mall, will be up for the same panto that I'm up for. But I no think, way. I, I couldn't learn lines. But listen, but that's the reality <laughs> of it. So I find that incredibly that's what unfair. I mean. That's what I yeah, mean. Because yes. there's a craft of what we do with it. It demeans what an actor is or how you can, well you can sing because they just got all oh, their stars to so put them because they've got followers and I've, I I refuse to indulge in that Aye. they've got more followers yeah. than me and I'm like that but uh, you'll get more more for your money with me you'll uh-huh. get more bang for your buck because I'll be able to do the job and I'll, I'll finish and I'll date right mm-hmm. whereas this is what I suppose I'm up against as influencers in a way in a, in a commercial way but there's also that thing of I'm up against um, people like, I suppose, like much better actors or, or actors that have more um, money and a budget, time spent with them, a better director. So there's all that that goes on and you think, well, how am I meant to compete with that? Yeah. If you're yeah. not given the opportunity, how are you meant to compete with that? That's mm. kind of where I'm at you know, now. Do you think that there is a, a thing happening, a culture being created where influencers are coming in either performing arts scene who are not qualified and getting jobs over the people that are qualified to do it. Is that happening? I don't think it's as much they're getting jobs over, but I think there's this culture as a, a an actor or a person on screen or like a kind of a noticeable face that we have to start doing lies. Hi guys, so I'm oh, here right. at the zoo with my, pa- my pal and my wains. <laughs> and it's like, it's all got to be a faceful thing. And, and, I, and I go, oh, I, I mean, listen, I've no usually got my eyebrows on. Like if, when right. people genuinely um, text me or, or message me for a video and I go, ah, you'll need to hang off for that because I'll need to put my makeup on. For me to feel a wee bit more comfortable because mm-hmm. like nobody will recognise me for the telly if I've broken my makeup on. <laughs> but you know, it's like you have to be that face it's all about face and I think oh doing like what's the face so of the yeah, product we're um, all a product of a brand and I kind of don't want to buy into that uh, there's yeah. that for me when I go like no I'm an actor first and foremost before any of that but equally I love going to stuff I love hosting stuff I love singing for my supper I love all that I love chatting to I love doing these ladies lunches and all that I did a, a gig uh, a couple of months ago with um, Kerry Katona where I got a total insight into another world where I was like <laughs> she has carved a career out on totally just having really big balls and I really respect that but Kerry couldn't do what I do but I, I don't think I could do what she does. Well, I um, wouldn't get my boobies out um, for OnlyFans. That's so, <laughs> does she do that? Is yeah, that yeah. what she's doing? Yeah. Um, you think, what was I going to say? It was something about, I do, is, are they trying to make the performing arts people more social media Is that what you it's mean? The, it's like, I think people, kids coming out of uh, drama school now, yeah, they have to be on that. And they actually do give like business classes at... Um, at drama schools where we never had any of that because there was no internet even we used to have to look up books and that for right. for, for songs and, right. and monologues whereas you can get anything there on the internet and i think they're teaching them business the business side of it because that's a massive side of the industry it's mm-hmm. very clever mm-hmm. and it's, and do you know what there's not a right way or, or right. a wrong way it's just a different way and actually the older ones are kind of left behind a wee bit <laughs> Right. But if they're, they're not going to indulge in it. I know, but you still need your, you still need your older But listen, see well. if somebody's willing to give me new teeth. I give me composite <laughs> bonding. I'm up for putting a post on. Just saying. Hashtag just saying. I mean, I got a chip in my tooth last year. I took a big chunk out of it. It's the first thing you notice about people. I would quite like composite bonding. Uh, right, so <laughs> we've put that out there. That's fine. Um, right, so what I want to move on to now is... I just discovered this morning, listening to you again, that you do the cold water therapy yes. because you've got... Are you perimenopausal? No, I'm menopause. I've are got you, the menopause. In, no. Right, okay. So, so I, I, tell th- us about that. Right, so yeah. I'm in clinical menopause because I have a condition called endomyosis, which is from the uh, the family of endometriosis. I just t- took really, really bad periods really heavy like I'd be at my work I'd be like oh my god doubled over I need to do eight scenes today how the hell am I going to get through this Um, I just it it started kind of 2017 and it was like I remember being doing panto and just that way you moan a lot I'm sore (laughs) and I moan a lot but I go oh I'm sick listening to myself moan and uh, I I, have well after going through like I actually went privately to get diagnosed because I was 
I was misdiagnosed, there was nothing wrong with me. Uh, I said to the doctor, the gynaecologist, but I get pain and she said, but all women get pain and I was like, brilliant. <laughs> so then anyways, I went, I, it was so continual and I would lose days in my bed and I was like, this is no quality of life. Anyway, went and got um, uh, diagnosed and then I was on the list for a long, 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 long time to see a, a gynaecologist uh, for a whole rip out uh, hysterectomy. This Jeez. is from the age of 30, 38. And uh, and so the the result of that is to put me in to um, switch my ovaries off. So how cool is this, right? So the gynaecologist has given me an injection, right, to see if the pain and all the rest of it, if if a hysterectomy would be beneficial to me. So they've shut my ovaries off. So they've given me an injection to send a signal to my brain to shut my ovaries off. I think that. I mean, can a doctor clear that up? I think that's how it's working, right? So for the last like whatever, that's it. Well, they've. They're giving me this just now, and then obviously they want to get me on the list for a hysterectomy, right? This is where we are just now, but I really don't want to go back with me because I'm I'm in this, Mary. I'm in this, and I'm like, well, if I'm in this, I'm not going back to periods. You can forget it and spending days in my bed. So I'm having the. So my symptoms are. I mean, <laughs> so if they put you into early artificial menopause, uh -huh. right? So, and then. When I said, oh, I don't really know how I feel about that, they said, but you're going to go into it anyways, which is true. Uh -huh. And I think when you're faced with the question, are you done having kids? That was a big, because I was not even thinking about it. And I, I've got one child, but I just never, we just never did it again. And not did it again, but like, <laughs> had a child again. And, uh, and I think when somebody asks you that, it's like, oh, wow, like, you, I was really taken aback, and I was like, oh, God, like, I don't know, and then your age isn't on your side, and you're like, oh, am I starting that again, and anyways, that's kind of, like, where it was, but I'm in this menopause the now, and I'm having hot flushes, I feel like, see, sometimes a kettle's boiling inside me. See, when you said there just now, you were having a hot flush, mm -hmm. you couldn't see it. You I red. feel like I went a wee bit red. Did I not go red? I couldn't see it. No, oh, I, I mean, but they wake me up. So this is it. Right. It's like sleep deprivation, like that kind of insomnia as well. That happens. And then it's the, the hormones. So I'm like this. And they can't. I'm driving and my wee daughter Stevie's beside me and I'm like that. And she goes, it's okay. It's okay. And I'm like, what's wrong? I go, I don't know. I just don't know. You're despairing oh, because you're oh. up doing your run about. It's like... I don't know whether I need a shit or a haircut. <laughs> that <laughs> is it. I and that's not just the hot flushes. That's just the everything. Moods, the hormones. I, but I think a lot. I mean, there's so many. I've and it's so weird because see, when you start to, I mean, it's the second thing that I say to people. I mean, it was the second thing I said to you. I've got the menopause, and my mum's like, "Gail, you're such an oversharer." And I'm like, "Shut up." She, we just never spoke about those things. And I'm mm -hmm. like, "Well, I'm going to become the Scottish Davina McCall because I am literally." So it's my phone. That's it, right? Who is it though? Oh. Uh, you were saying your mum was saying that they just didn't don't... speak about uh, it, and I was like, Well, mm -hmm. I think I should be doing the Scottish Davina McCall and actually tear snorters. I'm gonna show you that, but I've been, I've been vlogging it, I've, I've been taking videos. Do you, do you do it on Instagram? No, I've not been putting it out there yet. Listen, well, follow your truth. I know, say, you and know, but it's then you're a Anyways, I, <laughs> no. I, I know what you mean, but I'll be showing the good, Ouch. bad, and the ugly because I, I'm up that park some mornings and I am devastated and I'm like I don't even know what I'm devastated about but I am devastated and I think on a serious note without joking about this this is a thing for so many women we don't talk about it there's lots of women don't talk about we we, we, we do the periods right mm -hmm. so we do the periods first then we have the wanes then we have the postnatal sometimes and then we get this at the end of it like what the actual f it's not fair and actually we need to outlet it and talk about it and, and, and share because I think when we share, everything becomes a wee bit lighter, doesn't mm -hmm. it? It's like mm -hmm. they're teaching that in schools when they do the circle of yeah. truth and, and it's I amazing. Think, I think women need to talk about it because in my experience, I don't know about you, I have found that seeking help from the NHS, I'm not throwing stones at the NHS, I'm just stating the facts, yeah. is a bit of a brick wall and it feels like they don't know that much about women's hormones and you're actually better educated 
Googling it well, yourself. I, I mean, you can miss that. Well, you can diagnose yourself with all sorts of things on the Google, so just keep away for that. But my experience has been, I mean, the fact that I was sitting in front of a gynecologist, I, I said to my gynecologist, I feel so lucky to be sitting in, in front of you because I've waited for so long. NHS? Yeah. And, right. I, and I was like, I feel really like, right. and she was so and lovely. True. And no, I was, I was like, it was like, the day has come. I remember when I got my appointment and I was like, the day has come. Like, it was amazing to go and like be face to face because we're facing lots of long lists and stuff like that and they're totally under pressure. But I think to look up how you can holistically help yourself. I mean, my sister-in-law has been amazing. Uh, she has been searching teas for me. She loves herbal. Like she's mm -hmm. she's in touch with herbalists. Mm -hmm. Like What's all this kind tea? of. Uh, so there's this thing that she's been researching lately. It's a, it's a kind of woman that's doing this. It's called goat tea, but it's not like you need to buy it from a herbalist. Uh -huh. So there's all kind of herbal remedies that you can do. It. And also I do my cold water. So I do I have a tub out the back. I do I do the loch right. So I go in nature and I do the loch. But when I get up at five or six in the morning and I am having a hot flush. I just want to get in that water and even though the, it doesn't cure the flushes but it makes you cold for the inside out so see when I go into that 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 barrel I'm like I'm like a big mm -hmm. sausage I'm a mm -hmm. sizzling sausage <laughs> and it's amazing and do you know what I never regret it I think about it and it's like the uncomfortable you know how if something feels uncomfortable do it right as long as it's no dangerous right Aye. but you're like mm. if something feels uncomfortable it means you're going to grow after it I'm quite spiritual in that way right and i fight with myself getting in that bloody tub and like in the tub get no just a, no i'll lie here for a minute i'll get it and it's like get in the tub so i'm having these arguments in my head mm. and see when i get in that tub i'm like oh, this is amazing and i never and say other it. than mm -hmm. this is amazing or oh, i feel so much better now and it does do that too. Yeah. And mentally, do you think it has a... Because I, I did, yes. people ask me, I used to say, especially like the fall, that day, like going home, I would be on an actual high and it would last for three or four days. It wasn't even something I felt I needed to do every oh, day. Okay. It was, you know, every few days mm -hmm. was enough for me, even though... I am needing it then I know I'm needing it because I haven't done it well, for ages. And I think that's good that you identify with that because I started cold water dipping with my friend in lockdown and it, minus four is the coldest I've been in. There wasn't much to do and we were like, right, and I've seen, it was green cheese, I get the, get the better than me. I went, what are you doing now? What is that cold uh -huh. water? And she was like, mm -hmm. oh, it's meant That's how we all get in it. Absolutely. And I was like, I'm going to come with you. And I swear to God, we, I would meet it after work. I wouldn't be working at the time because filming was shot down. But that, right, let's meet at the lock. And, uh, and we would go in there and honestly it was like it started even before the menopause but it is absolutely 100% saved me on this journey because mm -hmm. sometimes I'm not very good at helping myself and I'm like oh the world's just a disaster and I'm not a, a catastrophizer but I think when you feel low with your hormones and you feel quite low in yourself it's very hard to help yourself isn't it so that wee tub is sitting at my back and listen they're cheap to get online there's a great one Soulful Sunday um, that um, I've, I've been at a retreat and stuff like that she's got a tub and she does a and a, a wee guide to get you in there and I think see even other than the law see that that intensifies the whole experience and it is quite zen and it actually does really motivate you it focuses you it makes you feel mentally more aware alert it stops the noises in your head because mm -hmm. that's the only thing you can think about that you're in this freezing cold water so it stops all the madness and the the ch chitter chatter in your brain it's just it's the best thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's what's worked for you do you take any medication what for that yeah 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 I, well i've had to in the last couple of weeks because the, the hot flushes were like they were so intense mm -hmm. i can't even tell you so i've got a wee patch and a tablet i take at night so hrt then? i have yeah aye, hrt because as soon as i left the hospital they said there's a letter for your doctor take the hrt and i went and i don't know why people i think it was because it was wasn't available to women that back in the day but it's mm -hmm. more wildly mm -hmm. i never had a problem aye, with Davina it. says um like I, I'm open to it as well if it comes to it for me. I'm I don't feel I'm at that stage yet, but right. if I get but then I had all the hot flushes when I was having my periods. Uh -huh. I, I think I've had it all back to front. Uh -huh. So I've had thirty years of that shit no, and it's no. actually just starting to get better. But anyway, if it gets worse again, which I'm fully, you know, aware it yeah, could yeah. happen. I'm totally open Well I've to been it. about two weeks now and I feel like they have they've they're not as intense yeah the flushes and i feel like my mood is a lot a lot kind of straighter like mm -hmm. I, I mean i'm talking about i'm i was losing days 
and I've got work and if to you, do. Aye. And if you <laughs> apparently, Davina will say, if you research it as well, the benefits far outweigh any risks with HRT because that's another big thing that gets bandied about how risky it is. Yeah, and I didn't and really know it. I was like, what is this stigma with aye. HRT? And then I was like, I'm not buying into it. I'm just going to go with my own experience. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know what, what it was you all did? about. Oh, yeah. right. So you never even looked at it. I kind of was like, I'd heard about it and I was like, well, what is it is so bad? And I was like, look, I can only be a judge for myself and do what I can for me. And actually, I'm responsible would, and make uh, myself feel better. Do you know and what I mean? And I would rather live happily taking something like that than live absolutely miserably thinking, well, I can't really take no, that because it's no, no good for me. No, Fuck no, that. No, 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 just, no. Let's just be happy. I think it's like, like, the difference between I don't want any pain relief when I'm put, when I'm going through labour. I'm like, oh, give me it all, man. <laughs> it's one of them I'll ones. I put that all the like, time. Oh, I know. Give me the, give it your, all. What's your birthing plan? I want it all. See when, they said, see when they said that? What pain relief? <laughs> they said what pain relief? Relief would you like? And I went pain relief. How am I going to need some? <laughs> I was that naive. I was like, give me it all. I don't care. Aye, aye, uh -huh. I was the same. I uh -huh. want everything. Let's enjoy ourselves uh -huh. while we're at it. <laughs> exactly, because uh -huh. it's brutal. Um, so I'm conscious of time. We've got five minutes. I wanted to ask you about the spiritual thing. You touched oh, yeah. on that. I love, a, I love a good spiritual chat. Me, so I do. I'm right into all of that. So what's your take on that? What's your, what do you do? What's your beliefs? Um, my beliefs are just... Do your own thing. <laughs> no, I, I think that um, I've been, not, I, I'm on a bit of a journey and I think it's really important to work on yourself. I think that life throws us so many challenges personally and professionally. Um, and I think that for me, that's how I've really kept it real is listening to podcasts, like doing things like I really relate to. Like I love that CEO guy, that um, uh, Steve Stephen Bartlett. Bartlett. I, uh, love yeah, I love him so him much. Well. Um, I've got and I do the men, the the water and the meditation. I started off with meditation either actually because I think when you've got a lot to learn, you've got a lot on your shoulders. You've got all these shows to do. Like I had to have an, an outlet because I was one step away from flipping the table. And I think when you're like that and you see somebody like that, it's very easy to go, "Oh, she's a bit uh, hard work. Uh, she's aggressive." And I think because I'm so passionate about that, sometimes that kind of doesn't get branded about but it's like maybe I can be quite much, a lot for some people but the the thing is nobody stops and says are they alright? Uh -huh. have they got a lot on their shoulders which mm -hmm. I at one point did in my, in my life but nobody really said are you alright? Mm -hmm. and that's nobody's fault but I think that that's just things that we should maybe just like look after each other a wee bit more i think that's really important especially with women you know nothing about what anybody's going through their story their this their that i mean we've all got one and mm -hmm. that's it and i think social media plays a big part in that get yourself off it and get out for a walk mm -hmm. it makes you feel so much better all those kind of things that help yourself you think that doom scrolling is going to make your life better it doesn't it give it makes you feel compared you compare yourself to other people's lives that don't even exist they're not even real I know. you I know, know what i mean use yeah. it for what you want to use it but put the phones down and actually read a book meditate listen to a podcast do something that ignites you but takes you away from your screen as we mm -hmm. sit here filming this <laughs> I know, but ours is different. We're real life, as I keep saying. I we're do not believe that. Posing in a car park no. and uh, looking pure dino. No, you know, no. We're just, all right, all right, man. For fuck's sake, speak for yourself. I've looked better, to be honest. And, no, I seen you. Who's know, that, that, that pretty in pink? You look beautiful. Oh, with it's my so six gorgeous. pound dress on. Why do you do that? Saying, so I met her and she was like this. I, I was like, you look gorgeous. Look at your dress. She's like, oh, it's only six pound. You know what? Like and I'm like, why do women do that? They go like this. Oh, this is boring. It's just two pounds. I mean, I do. I like it, but it was only six pounds. They don't I tell know, everybody just, that. I know I do that. I'm <laughs> shite to take a compliment. Just that is the it. problem. Do you know what I say? I go, don't before after I've just said a comment I go don't bat it back aye it's aye, hard though aye, it is hard when you're brought up in Scotland with oh, you know the when your mum looks at you and she goes and she doesn't say it and I go she obviously doesn't like us today and my aye. mum gets takes real umbrage about that I go like that but I try and teach her the spiritual way and she's like ah, she's not interested she's just like I mean did you see the state of her and I'm like that aye. why would you go for that right away like that's out of order yeah. and she's yeah. like I'm just saying look and at the size of Ash I'm like look at the size of you Ash <laughs> nobody's oh. complaining about that I know and my gran was like that as well and no, the whole washing nothing. thing back to that people were judged by my gran how they hung out their washing <laughs> 
Like honestly, well, I'm a total nightmare. I'm not married. I've, I've had a child at a wedlock. I mean, I've done it all back to front. All girl, I she's doing in London, living with a guy. I'm like, shut up. Do you, do you hang your lashing out? Well, I hang my lashing out well, by the way. <laughs> and actually, I will not be judged by having a child at a wedlock and all this. Not that it's a huge issue, but I'm like, that's no oh, because it, it, ma it makes me a bad person. It's like the swearing thing. My mum's like, you swear too much. I'm like, that because that makes me a bad person because I swear a lot. Get a grip. I, well, it's a sign of intelligence anyway. I'm sure I read back. You know it's, it's, it's not a sign of intelligence, it's a sign of passion and what yes. you care about what you're saying. You're trying to go over how you feel about something. Yeah, and people totally get it if you fly on a sweary word. And do you know, I'm digressing. Last thing I'm going to say, did you watch that um, documentary with what's his name that's, uh, that's the drug addict? I've just forgotten his name, him and his wife. Da uh, is it Darren McGarvey? No. No, 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 Darren. I follow him. He's That's not who. Um, El oh, what's his name? Oh, Matt Willis. Uh, aye, Matt Willis and. Uh, oh, Emma Willis. Aye. Why was I saying that to you about that? Why was I saying that? You said something the that gave me thank you them. Oh, I can't believe I've just forgotten what the it was. Swearing. It was like, aye, that was it. The swearing. So the BBC did this documentary, oh, and I, I was it. so so pleased to see it, and there was swearing in it. And I came on my stories the next day and said, see, that's what real life is like it's when very, something's very really, really shit. Yeah. Who's not swearing about it? Yeah. Who? Yeah. You're, you're swearing about it. And they put it on and I just thought, that is so that was refreshing. A, it, was, it was so refreshing. And what a, an honest, honest take I, on. I, I know. It was, was brilliant. brilliant. Yeah. I know. That's just by the way. Listen, we're, we're time's up. We've done an hour. You've done amazing. Thank oh. you so much for coming to chat. Thanks so much you're, for having me. Brilliant, and mm, I hope I it know. all works out. Yeah, with all your things. Oh, thank you, doll. All thank right. you. See Bye. You later, <laughs>